What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report. I am your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Show. Brian, as you can see, everyone, I had I was watching it before the show because there was really no urgency for me to want to watch this show. All I've been doing is listening to like Emergency Awesome, new rock star breakdowns and stuff like that. Because all I want to know are the Easter eggs, um, the references. That's my interest in She-Hulk. Outside of that, Brian, I have really no interest in watching this show. My biggest complaint is just that, well, two two things. One, it's just not my type of humor. I'm, I'm just, it's just not funny to me. You know, it's, it's just not my type of thing. It just isn't. Um, and number two, I can't bear to watch She-Hulk for more than 10 seconds on screen while she talks and it just doesn't look good, yo. I, I don't as care. She, as She-Hulk, you mean? As She-Hulk, as She-Hulk. Yeah. Yeah. As She-Hulk, she's, it just doesn't look good. The, the talking, and it's just, I just can't watch it. I don't want to watch it. Um, every the, you know, the perform the, the casts, I think they're doing a wonderful job in what they're doing. It's just that what's written and then where they decided to go with this is just not funny to me, and, and I, I just don't care for it. Brian, you have uh similar thoughts on this show, yeah. So, Pablo call tag this a bunt single after the premiere. <laughs> I want to. I just want to be clear. He tagged it a bunt single. I, their batting average is zero in my book. Um, look, I, I hear you on the CGI in a weird way. The, the edge was taken off a little bit because the trailer CGI was so bad that you kind of, I felt like we kind of had a little bit of time to mentally be prepared for how bad it was going to look. So like, yeah, it looks unnatural, but it's kind of like we sort of expected it to be weak and it's been weak. Yeah. I think where I'm most concerned with regard to this is I am trying to imagine what this is going to look like if she's on the big screen in a team up movie, because it can look like this. It cannot look like this. It's going to mm -hmm. show the flaws so much more if it's on a giant and like an IMAX screen, this would look just, this would make like Jar Jar Binks look like <laughs> futuristic. And that was like 20 some odd years ago. You can excuse that. But like, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's what worries yeah, yeah. me a little bit with the CGI. So definitely it's on my list of problems, but I said to you, it's not even at the top. This is my number one complaint. So in a weird way, it, it dovetails with what you're saying where like you're into this show for the Easter eggs and the references. I am kind of finding that part of the show insulting. I think this show is garbage, like <laughs> trash. And okay. I think what happened, but let, let, let me explain what I mean by that. What I mean by that is I think the real show, <laughs> I think the show that they wrote and wanted to shoot and wanted to put on screen is awful. And I think Marvel knows it's awful. And what they did was they put it into the factory and said, we are going to jam this up with as many threads, Easter eggs, cameos, and smoke screens to make you think that you're watching something that's impactful to the MCU. When all we're really doing is trying to fool you into not yeah. realizing how terrible this show actually is underneath. That's what's bothering me. The deeper we get into this show, yeah. and I'm seeing this thing, like that fourth wall break where she's like in the car and she acknowledges that it's a cameo show. I'm like, you aren't outsmarting yourself by doing that. All you're doing is drawing attention to the fact that your show stinks. <laughs> and Marvel knew it stunk. It tested horrible. So they went in and said, we are going to smush some peanut butter and jelly of MCU multiverse stuff to make this show remotely relevant. And it's just getting to the point now where I'm just like, it's a joke. And a lot of the storylines and elements they're putting in here, I'm not excited about. 
Are you excited about like World War Hulk, the way they've teed it up? Are you excited about the Wrecking Crew? Are you excited about the way the Thunderbolts are started? I'm not excited about any of it, the way they're showing it here. Brian, the Wrecking Crew, the Wrecking Crew that almost killed Hercules. This is the this is the this is the people that did that the, the Hercules. Yeah. That's we supposed to believe mean. that? <laughs> but that but so you have a show that's so light, it's so harmless. And now you're putting in all these things that are supposed to lead to important places, but you can't make them heavyweight and you can't make them meaningful because the tone of the show doesn't allow it. So you get the wrecking crew, which is like a bunch of Toys R Us, like buffoons carrying light up sticks, getting the crap beaten out of them instead of what they're supposed to be in in the comics. You get, you know, Mark Ruffalo headed off to Sakaar for unfinished business and we're supposed to be excited, but the Hulk is, you know, he was, he was comic relief in a comic show before he left and I'm like, He's now going to transform into this wrecking machine when he goes back there. Don't buy it. And then I see the Thunderbolts. And like, I thought the moment that was going to drive you up a wall was when Blonsky became the abomination. And you realize that we got Professor Abomination now. Yeah. He talks and he's in control of his alter ego. What are we doing? These characters are jokes. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thunderbolts are supposed to end phase five. It's supposed to be the culmination of phase five. This is a terrible way to start getting us excited for. You can't try to do this. This is where experimentation goes wrong, Brian. Yeah, I agree with that. You know, you want to be into the comedy thing now. There's a way to be comedic without being like that, you know? But this is also where you're compounding, like the show is a mistake and you're compounding a mistake by starting to make other mistakes with these other stories. And this is also why I am dreading Charlie Cox's appearance in this series more and more, the further yeah. we get in. Because if they reduce him to a joke before he gets his own show, look, 18 episodes, plenty of time for him to reclaim his territory. But still, I don't need like the lead in from No Way Home was fine. It was nice. It was understated, didn't betray the character. They mess around with the character tonally, the way that this show is messing around. It's definitely going to leave a sour taste in my mouth as we head toward his own show or even his role in Echo, which I don't think is going to be nearly as, as uh, lighthearted. So yeah, it's just, just concerned. But I, I just can feel, I don't know, when I watch these episodes, I can feel the sandwich. Like I can feel like where the original show is, like when they're in the courtroom, just goofing around and I'm like, oh, yeah, maybe that's comedy for some people. It's not funny to me, but like some people yeah. might like that. And then you feel the like, we're stuffing it. We're stuffing it with these bits. We're stuffing it with Wong. We're stuffing it with all this stuff to make you care. It's just not working, man. This, this, show, this show is like cementing its place in the basement of the rankings. That's the foundation right there. <laughs> <laughs> That's like the core of the earth. Yeah. Right? <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? Um, it's just, uh, and do you feel this fourth wall in this show will bother you in Deadpool when it comes? Would it get old? Would it start getting old to you? Well, no, in the sense that Deadpool was there first. Yeah. And, the, and I felt like Ryan Reynolds is better at it. Like, I, I don't, yeah, we'll get back to Mislani, I feel like, is the only thing holding this show afloat. Like, when she's yeah. not She Hulk, that is the only thing in this show that's like above water. Yeah, Reynolds is just better at the fourth wall break. His writing was, the writing was stronger behind how they used it in, in Deadpool, which was also drawn from the comics, right? Another character that did that. So yeah. it, it's more like, yeah, I do think there's a little bit of risk of repetition, but like if Deadpool's doing it in an R-rated setting and doing it Deadpool's way, Man. I kind of feel like it'd be more like 
it'll re, it'll re, it'll ricochet back onto She Hulk, right? It'll become like shrapnel into She Hulk. It won't take away as much from Deadpool. It'll be like, well, here it is done right. Um, yeah. Maslany is actually pretty good at it. Like I, I, as I said, I just think she's the prisoner of the writing, which I don't think is nearly as clever as Jessica Gao and the writers think they're being. I think they think they're like in the pantheon of you know intelligence here and i'm just here to say like it's not it's not hitting it's not it right would you agree that there's a certain way you can do comedy that fits into for example the boys it is hilarious sure you guys are are going towards the spec the 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 area of goofy and it's just upsetting and it's, it's just like where are we going what are we doing what are we doing after this what are we doing brian is the i mean west coast avengers i think we're leading towards that now we get a wonder man right all, all this stuff is happening that should be interesting brian not because it's wonder man not because he's a man but because of the character that he is, it could be it could be interesting. All I'm gonna do, Brian, it, from week to week, I'll probably watch it. But for the most part, I'm gonna be on Emergency Awesome the next day on New Rock Stars, listening to breakdowns, Easter eggs, and all that other stuff. I mean, the only thing good is this thirty minutes. But you know, like, I mean, my, I wouldn't pretend to be a funny guy. I wouldn't pretend to have a sense of humor. But I know as a consumer of comedy. Comedy, I find comedy to be best when it's effortless. Comedy that is done and it's like a character's just doing their bit and you just react to it as funny. Anytime I anytime I feel there's like writing or performance where it's like, look at us, we're being funny, I rarely <laughs> find that to be funny, right? And that's yeah, yeah. You see that with like when James Gunn is on the wrong side of his line. You see that? He's actually a great example because sometimes he's on the right side of it and it is really funny. And then yeah. sometimes he's on the wrong side of it and it's really unfunny. Yeah. This show has just felt like, and I, you know, to me it was like, no, you know, we were like no greater example of this than the credit scene with Megan Thee Stallion. I'm like, it's, to me, that's like, it's insulting, it's demeaning, and it's like, look at us, we got this celebrity, look how funny we're being, we've got She-Hulk twerking, and I'm like, this sucks, <laughs> it's terrible. Like, it's a disgrace to the celebrity who's doing the cameo, it's a disgrace to the character, and like, I don't need to see it. And you're putting it in a, you just, every episode has had a credit scene, end credit scene, and every one of them has been bad. Yeah. I remember back in like Avengers 1, right, and it's like, they do the shawarma joke scene at the end. And I'm like, you guys earned it, right? You did, you did this cycle. You did these incredible cut scenes culminating with the Thanos turning to the camera. And then you took the shawarma joke and you wanted to have a wink, wink for two seconds. I'm cool with that. You yeah. earned the right to have a little fun. You start doing that every single time out. Strange did it. I don't remember, I was, what was Thor Love and Thunder's end credit scene? Just the Earl Hercules stuff. The Hercules, Hercules stuff. yeah. That was whack. Well, that those types of scenes are Kevin's fault. The the celebrity, yeah. the celebrity drop in, he seems to be pushing, and that's his fault. But I'm I'm talking <laughs> about the like you know kind of meta messing around ones that they have become also far too common at these. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. That's not helping either. Like, I mean, it's like, you also got to think like, look, in this case, the credits are short. We can fast forward. But like, if you're in the movies, man, you're sitting like an extra 10, 15 minutes. Like that's audience time. And when you put together a scene like that with regularity, you make it worth your- my time, yo. Yeah. yeah. Make it worth my time. We are sitting there religiously after every movie that you do we sit there for two credit scenes make it worth my time and if you're gonna be funny a earn it and b make it funny 
make it actually funny. You know? This is frustrating. Yeah. Timing is, is bad too. Timing is bad because the MC this is hitting when the MCU is in a slump, right? It's sort of just adding to the pressure that's on Wakanda forever. Um, you know, if this had hit during phase three, it would have been dismissed and people would have been like, ah, you know, even Marvel has an occasional misstep, but we wouldn't be as like bothered by it. But I find like I'm more bothered because I see all these things that are heading off in other directions. And I'm like, you, you, they better be better than what you're teasing here. Like World War Hulk better be better than what you've set up here. Because you already kind of messed with the Planet Hulk storyline a little bit in Ragnarok. You already kind of used that up in a not so cool way. You blow yes. World War Hulk. It's like that's another classic comic line that you just abused. They destroyed a great story in Planet Hulk. And they, and they rushed it just to get to this smart Hulk situation. They rushed it just to get to this point. No longer do we want to work with the Savage Hulk. We don't know how to work with him. Really? You don't know how to work with the Savage Hulk? Now... I, I, I'm pretty sure you know about the complaints and now you want to get back to that. So you're going to tell this story in whatever way that you're going to tell it. Yo, Brian. That joint better be good, Brian. But I'm like afraid, right? Because it's like, he's going there goofy. You got Jeff Goldblum who's going to be doing Jeff Goldblum things. And you're kind of like the foundational pieces of this show look like they're more comedy than they are kind of raw action. And I don't know, like that's got me, that's got me concerned. That's why the same thing I was like, you know, Blonsky blows him to the abomination. He sounds like Korg. And I'm like, really? Like that's his participation in the Thunderbolts is going to be like some sort of wise cracking self-aware you know, wrecking ball. Like, I'm, I don't know. Like, that's like they're doubling down on this. I don't know who's in the room saying that, like, these smart Hulk and Hulk derivative characters are maybe they test really well. We don't realize it, but man, they are far. Where are they? Where the hell are they testing, Brian? That's what I mean. Who's giving them the feedback that, like, we want more of these characters? Oh, man. If Marvel, if Marvel was listening to this, I'd tell them this. Put me in that room to watch some of this stuff, and I'll tell you, yo, this is not going to work. I'm sorry. Chop, chop. This ain't working. I don't know who's telling these guys, yo, this is funny. This is what's... Who's telling... What happened to... The stories, I don't know, that just bring something out of you. I mean... The I don't know thing, how to explain it, man. And the other thing, too, is like now that it's become clear that these episodes have not just like random Easter eggs, right? This is not like the princess bar. Like that's like a flash of a scene. But like actual scenes, actual characters who are participating as cameos and storylines. I think that's actually hurting the real show even more. Because when you go to like the courtroom scene, which you are supposed to care about in the context of the actual show, Tell me that you guys are not watching this being like, I just want to skip to the next Easter egg. Like you're watching that scene and be like, well, this scene doesn't go anywhere in the MCU. This is the actual show that I don't really get. It, it's they're messing with each other. Like, it's just like this vicious cycle I'm finding of like, you don't want to see either all that much. So I, I just, this is a complete misfire. The, the Griggs who like this to me, as I said, I think they like it because they're not MCU fans. So for them, it's sort of like this enjoyment of seeing super powered and comic characters doing goofy things resonates with critics, but like they don't know anything about the comics or the universe. And I actually have listened to at least one podcast where someone who I know is an avid reader of the comic, and he hates the show, hates it. <laughs> but, and he's... He's basically being like, yeah, this show is a train wreck. And I, that, you know, I think that's more, if you're into these stories and these 
and the essence of these characters, I think you're kind of starting to feel disrespected. Yeah. Brian, um, are you going to continue watching this show? I'll keep watching it, take the notes, but no, nah, this, this show, this show can't end fast enough. Like, yeah, you know, I'll be, yeah. let's put it this way. I'll be very thankful when I can watch, you know, an hour of Andor and then half hour of this. Make me feel better about going to Disney Plus every week. Yeah. Yeah. Man, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of this because this ain't it. This ain't it. And listen, I get it that some of you may like it and you and we don't know what we're talking about. Oh, yeah. What, yeah, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Viewership has not been terrible. It's kind of, it's better than Miss Marvel. It's kind of like in the ballpark of Moon Knight or Hawkeye. That's kind of where the viewership's been. I think part of the reason people are watching is there is literally nothing to go to the movie theater to see, which is why they're re-releasing re No Way Home. There's nothing True. else. Out. Like Everything you want to watch right now is on TV, right? House of the Dragon, Rings of Power. Like There's nothing in a movie theater that's new that you actually want to go check out. That's why, I mean, Top Gun Maverick's still in the top five. 12 <laughs> weeks. 12 weeks later, still in the top five. Wow. Nothing else. Tom Cruise, man. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, who will be the next one to try to beat the superheroes at a billion? You know what I'm saying? That's a shoot. It, Tom Cruise, somebody's good. The Rock is the only one that's thinking about that he's next. I can't wait for this movie, Brian. I can't wait. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of She-Hulk. Do you guys like it? Easter eggs is all I'm worried about. And, and I got two sources for that. And Brian is going to continue watching it for us. He had the Nerd Gen report so that he can report on it. Uh, but yeah, that's our show. We'll see you next time on the Nerd Gen report.